Good evening and welcome to a special edition of the Catholic Defender Radio Show. Tonight, with your host Don Hartley, the Catholic Defender, we will examine in depth the truths of our faith and why we believe them. Tonight, Don Hartley's guest host is John Carpenter, an expert on a number of apparitions of our Blessed Mother. Tonight, John will lead us in an in-depth examination of one of these apparitions. Here now is John Carpenter, who will tell us which of Our Lady's apparitions we will examine tonight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Journey with Mary. Every week, we do take a close look at one of the appearances of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Somewhere in the last 2,000 years, anywhere in the world, she has appeared. She has appeared every continent, every possible place you can imagine. And there are at least closing in on 3,000 documented reports in 2,000 years. So obviously, she's been very busy since 40 AD right up to the present day. And uh, I didn't know about any of this until about 10 years ago, and I, it, uh, working as a psychiatric therapist, I'm always very interested in people's experiences. I had no idea this was real stuff going on, and as I got into it, I was immediately impressed by the similarity, the, the same details, the same things happening over and over and over, which you do not get with fantasy or imagination, hallucination, psychosis, any of that stuff. Those things you get wildly different and very divergent detail. This was consistently alike, which paints a picture of reality. And to go along with that, all the experts and scientists and professionals who've studied the visionaries come to the same conclusion. There's nothing abnormal about these people. And they weren't expecting or looking for any of this to happen especially the three atheists in Venezuela. They didn't even believe in the Virgin Mary, and then she appeared to them. That will change your life. <laughs> so um, so all this has been, has been going on, and what we do on the show is try to bring you the best details from the stories that are out there and to give you accurate and up-to-date, valid information so you can make up your own mind what's going on. In our opinion, she is here to get us back on track, to get us back to her son, to the church, to the mass, to the sacraments, to confession, to penance, on and on to stay on track. Because, folks, we're headed towards eternity. We're just here in the blink of an eye on earth. And we may think that that's all there is, and it's just the opposite. Eternity is all that you will be experiencing, and we're just here as a almost like an audition for where we're going to spend uh, eternity. So by all means, you want to know where you stand and you want to get on track so that you don't end up going down the wrong path. Because I'm telling you, there's so many people on the wrong path right now, even from young children to even older adults, just still way off track, going down horrible paths. And, you know, it's just it's just something that we care about. And so this show is about to educate you, to inspire you, and to hopefully keep you going where you need to go in your life. So uh, what could be more important? Seriously, what could be more important? So joining me tonight is my co-host, a Catholic Defender and <clears throat> Super Bowl fan of his Kansas City Chiefs. I had to throw that in because he would if I didn't. Uh, Mr. Donald Hartley. Uh, well, <laughs> right. good evening there, John, and and how good that was to win the Super Bowl. But uh, I'll tell you what, we have, you know, when we're talking about, I love the sports analogy and how it applies. You know, St. Paul utilized it a lot in the New Testament even in uh, when he would speak about sports. Uh, running the race and and fighting the fight and the mindset, you know, training, uh, how important that is for the life of a Christian to practice their faith because that's probably part of the problem that I see that uh, you're kind of pointing to because so many families today, uh, they're not teaching their children uh, the ways of the faith. 
children are being robbed, brought up in a secular society more than, than anything. And so uh, families who are strong, bonded, the family that play, prays together, stays together, uh, it just seems like the, the family has been under attack. And uh, as the family is under attack, you've got divided homes, you've got a whole lot of problems in our society, and we're feeling it. But there's always that opportunity for us to turn things around, and that's what we hope to do uh, one person at a time to how many people can be listening to us to a whole generation. We need to do that, and, and that's what our cause is, is to, to support and help build up the Catholic family, to help moms and dads who work together to bring their children to a real relationship with the Lord. And that's why St. Uh, uh, Dominic and, and the saints, I, I consider them in, in the sports analogy, you know, we, we do have uh, like the, you know, football and baseball and basketball Hall of Fames. We have a Hall of Fame and probably the most important Hall of Fame of all. It says in Hebrews 12, 1, that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, our Hall of Fame. <laughs> and, That's right. Uh, we got a great one tonight. We got a great one tonight right. that we're going to be talking about, and what a great story. So, and we got yep. also Judy Alciator from the great state of Texas. How you doing there, Judy? Come on board. Hi, guys. There she is. Hello. <laughs> I heard you have a brand new poem. <clears throat> I do, and I also have an older one. Um, well, let's let's hear your new one. Let's hear the new one first, okay? Well, yeah, <laughs> like hot I, off the not, press, you know. <laughs> the Lord sent me this a few hours ago. Wow. <clears throat> I am an empty vessel, waiting for God's love. I am a wandering stranger needing guidance from above. I am a humble sinner, needing to confess. I am so lost and lonely. Oh, God, please, will you bless? Bless me out of darkness. Bless me out of shame. Bless me out of anger. Bless me by thy name. Now I'm no longer empty, no stranger to thy word. Thy light will now unfold me. My prayer, God, you have heard. Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Amen. Right, go, ahead and give us the, go ahead and give us the old one, too. <clears throat> okay, the reason I chose this older one was because I was watching um, the movie, The Thirteenth Day. Yeah. Oh, and, good movie. Um it ended with her, and <clears throat> she's writing, you know, what happened and everything. And the movie ended with her saying that she hopes that uh, what happened at Fatima will lead to peace. <clears throat> and this is a song, this is from, um, the poem rather, this is from several years ago, and I entitled it Love Song. Peace for tomorrow, peace for today. That is the true path, that is the way. Follow the person who sings a love song, a song that implores you to choose right over wrong. Follow the wise man, the wise woman too. Follow the person who shares goals with you. Peace for the present, the future to come. With uplifted voices, sing we as one. Sing for your children, sing for their pride. Sing out your love song. Don't hide it inside. A love song that honors the courage and love of those who have fallen and risen above. A love song that tells us that peace is the way, the path that will lead to a much brighter day. Beautiful. So much brighter day. And God day. knows this yeah. world needs his peace. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Very nice. Speaking, yeah. speaking of which, uh, Facebook just did it to me again right now. It says you can't <laughs> use Facebook right now. See, they're oh, they're right. they're they're going after. I mean, I can't even get on there now. Uh, <sighs> and you know why? Because I was promoting this show, the Virgin Mary appears to Saint Dominic, and the story of the Rosary. <clears throat> they I don't could not accept that. that. 
What? I mean, what? I mean, what is going on? It's <clears> Facebook, <throat> and uh, we, we, it's crazy. Alongside of this, we got Michael from New Jersey. Come on, Michael. Come on. <clears throat> you man. did Come it. You, down, you did it right. You know, you know that song you played at the top of the show opens up a burning question. Did Parsley okay. save Rosemary in time? <laughs> Did what? I hope so. Did Parsley save Rosemary in time? Oh, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Was it that bad? <laughs> yes. Hey, Donald. <laughs> Donald. Yes. Where Where did you get that? Where yes. did you get that song? Who, who did that song? It's a group the uh, uh, people that I have I know uh, called Apologetics, and uh, they they do a lot of uh, popular music and they are fantastic. And so, wow. that I missed the song. What uh, were they per- singing? Well, what were they singing? Uh, Offer your prayer. Uh, it's the song is Scarborough called Offer Your Fair. Prayer. By Simon and oh, Garfield. Scarborough Fair. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I, they were, I caught that, but what were the words they were singing? Oh, it's all different. Well, it's all different. It's yeah. well, it's all definitely all different. They, they Christianized the song, is what they did, and it's about right. offering your prayer. Are you going to offer your prayer? And, I'm going to uh, have to listen to the recording. The, yeah. The rosary. Yeah, you'll like oh, it. It's powerful. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Speaking of the rosary. We're going to start our story because it's a bit long. Um, this takes us back to oh, anywhere from 1206 to 1214. It's a little confusing the exact date, but uh, we're going to southern France and part of Spain. It's kind of on the border there. And uh, found in the very well-known book, De Dignatie Salteri. My blessed Alan de la Roche is the account of how St. Dominic acquired the rosary in the year 1214. St. Dominic, seeing that the gravity of people's sins were hindering the conversion of the Albigensians, withdrew into a forest near Toulouse, where he prayed continuously for three days and three nights. During this time, he did nothing but weep and harsh penance in order to appease the anger of God. He used his discipline so much that his body became lacerated, and finally he fell into a coma. Our Lady appeared to him, accompanied by three angels, and said, quote, Dear Dominic, Do you know which weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Oh, my lady, answered St. Dominic, you know far better than I do, because next to your son, Jesus Christ, you have always been the chief instrument of our salvation. Our lady replied, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, she means spiritual warfare, the principal weapon has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my psalter. Now, the angelic psalter is the first part of the rosary. And so it's the, uh, the, the, the first... Um, a couple of lines of the rosary. And uh, that is uh, actually uh, the uh, heavenly announcement of Christ coming and then the earthly announcement of Christ coming with uh, um, saying, Hail Mary, um, you know, the Lord is with thee. And then, uh, blessed are those, or blessed art thou among women. And then Elizabeth says, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. That's the earthly announcement of Jesus coming. So you've got both heaven and earth announcing Christ coming. And that was the angelic psalter. So, um, so Dominic arose, comforted, and burning with zeal, for the conversion of the people, 
in that district, he made straight for the cathedral. At once, unseen angels rang the bells to gather the people together, and St. Dominic began to preach. At the very beginning of his sermon, an appalling storm broke out. The earth shook. The sun was darkened, and there was so much thunder and lightning that all were very much afraid. Even greater was their fear when looking at a picture of Our Lady positioned in a prominent place. They saw her raise her arms to heaven three times to call down God's vengeance upon um, them if they failed to be converted to amend their lives, and to seek the protection of the Holy Mother of God. God wished, by means of these supernatural phenomena, to spread the new devotion of the Holy Rosary and to make it more widely known. Okay, so I'll stop right there. That's quite a dramatic introduction (laughs) of his preaching about the Rosary. Any reactions? Well, I mean, to me, the rosary has been... You're fading in and out. Your voice is fading in and out. I don't know why. Yes. I am? Mine? Yes, John, yours. Who? Oh, did anyone else? Mine's not? Is mine? Did anyone else? No, I don't know if it's my phone or... or, But every time we do the show, I I I notice, notice John, your voice uh, goes in and out, in and out. Well, I'm speaking okay. one inch from the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> one I, inch I don't know what it microphone. is. It could be my phone. Well, does anyone else hear that uh-huh. problem? Well, I don't, I don't notice it. I, I mean, we'll find out when we listen to the uh, archive. We'll find okay. out that. Um, you know, this whole thing about the rosary and, every, and, and the importance of it, I've always felt that the rosary was kind of like a, uh, what would you say, uh, 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 scarlet thread. I was hanging on my faith through this scarlet thread when I was uh, in a bad way, and and thank God for mm-hmm. His mercy. And through the rosary, uh, it, it has helped uh, build me back up. After I left college in early mm-hmm. 1980, I had an apartment in Harrison, Arkansas, awaiting before I got married. In the meantime, I met a young man I found out was uh, running away from home. And after some time, I talked him into going back home, and the parents were so happy with me that uh, they offered me a room to help me save rent, which I thought was pretty cool. And in this time, they challenged me on the rosary. I, I was just now coming back to my Catholic faith at the time, and they were challenging me with the, the rosary, and I thought that was such an important part of what we're talking about tonight. They were talking about being vain repetitions and all this kind of thing. They want to uh, refer to Matthew 6, 7, in which states, In praying, do not babble like the pagans who think they that they will be heard because of their many words. When I read that in the King James Version, that scared me. Because when I was, I'm like, wow, is that what we're doing with the rosary? No. So the King James Version of the Bible <laughs> exchanges babble. With vain repetition. So that's where the yeah. whole idea of when people challenge it. Just looking at this with yeah. a sensible mind, you might ask yourself, why is this anything special? Well, there's a difference from someone who babbles from someone who prays the rosary. The rosary is a devotion that requires meditation. If you pray anything with mere words without meaning it from the heart, yeah. that would yeah. be vain. You can speak the name of Jesus in vain if you're not honoring him. So if you look at the whole context coming from Matthew's Mm. gospel, beginning with chapter 6, Jesus is giving Mm. his teaching about almsgiving. It is a question of the heart. You either do good works for love of God, or you do things for a Mm. price or personal profit. Jesus gives his teaching on prayer. You either say Mm. that you mean say what you mean and need, and need, or you put on an act or show. This is the real issue, in fact. Jesus yeah. gives us the Lord's Prayer as the example, Christian <clears throat> prayer par excellence. And then Jesus then gives his teaching on fasting. You either fast for all to see 
or you fast for the Lord doing personal sacrifice. Jesus then teaches us the importance of storing up treasure in heaven. You either keep your mind centered on the ways of God, or you fall into a secular humanist base, a worldly mind, just looking at what Jesus is teaching. You should give alms, we should pray, we should fast, and we should seek heavenly treasure as opposed to the worldly carnal mind. The problem is not the rosary or any devotion as long as your heart is properly wanting to do God's will, to seek his direction and honor and serve him. And if by chance you're not convinced by what I'm saying here, then just consider uh, what the, the, the Bible says about this. In Psalms 136, it repeats, God's love endures forever, 25 <coughs> times <laughs> in this Psalms. Uh, should I consider you think God's word can be vain? I hardly think not. And so when Our Lady is giving us this uh, this rosary, this psalter here, this is perfect within the biblical framework. As always, again, John, we are right on when it comes right down to the Virgin Mary and being biblical. Amen. Yeah. I'd like All to right. add something to that. Sure. Go ahead. When we pray, whether it's the rosary or any other uh, prayer to God, um, what is your intent? If you are praying for something that's intrinsically evil, um, that's praying in vain. And the reason why I say that is because God is not going to grant that prayer. He hears it. He hears that prayer. But he's not going to answer that prayer with a yes. Because you are praying for something that is wrong. And there are people well, yeah. who do that. There are people who do that. They pray that their enemies will suffer in some way or, or someone that they don't like. They pray for that person to have bad luck. God is not going well, to answer such prayers. And that's praying in and, vain, too. Well, and no matter what we pray for, it always comes down to what what God's will is, what he uh, is going to do we can ask for anything but you know it's going to come down to what his will is going to be no matter what we ask for so yeah he's not going to do anything like that exactly would you have would you have angels <laughs> ringing the bell for you that's a yeah. good sign that uh, you're doing god's will uh and i mean I nobody was imagine. nobody was <laughs> Nobody was going to fall asleep with that thunder and lightning and all the storm and everything. They're going to make sure everybody was wide awake for this sermon. Uh, and Mary's motioning to heaven like, hey, if you don't listen, man, I'm calling down the wrath of God. So, whoa, I think everybody was wide awake. So here's how yeah, I, I have a question about that. <clears throat> right. um, this is the first time I can remember um, – you know, such a thing that the Blessed Mother would be calling down God's vengeance. Usually she speaks about, you know, trying to hold her, her son's hand at bay, you know, not so that people don't get punished, to give them time to repent. Um, this, this sounds uh, this sounds like, like a, a bit of a difference to me. Well, here here's the thing. She's not saying this. They're looking at her picture and they're thinking that's what she's doing. Ah, you know, okay. she didn't say I'm calling down the vengeance. They're looking at the picture and seeing her motioning her arms upward, and so they're thinking that's what Three she's times. doing. Right. Oh, but, okay. Because well, I can't mean. picture her calling down God's vengeance on anyone. <laughs> no, because she doesn't. You're right. She doesn't. So that was just their impression. Which, they were scared and they didn't know what was going on. I agree. <laughs> but you know, it kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds me when the Pharisees was telling Jesus to come down off that cross if you're the Messiah. It kind of reminds me of that that mindset that some people may have had in the back of their mind. Uh, I right. think that when Mary was doing this, when she was raising three times her, you know, like she was calling upon our Lord, this was a major event. The rosary was going to become a major event in world salvation history. Uh, right. The, God was wanting to use this for a specific for for the world to save it, and it ha 
has continued ever since 1206 to now. The Roji has never been done away with. On the contrary, it's been emphasized more and more. At Fatima, it asked us to pray the rosary daily for the conversion of sinners. I think that, uh, uh, I mean, is it mandatory? Well, in a Catholic mind, it's not necessarily mandatory. I think we should pray it often, and and you should pray it daily. There's, you know, I mean, that's something that we all should do. Sometimes we all well, fall, you know, in the last, but... But the, the rosary is, is such a, a important asset to well, us in our spiritual walk, you know. I like this one thing that was said where they said that um, the rose is the queen of all flowers and the rosary is the queen of all prayers. And I always, I always have liked that uh, analogy. So... All right, let me continue here. At the end of this service, at the prayer of St. Dominic, the storm came to an end, and he went on preaching. So fervently and compellingly did he explain the importance and the value of the rosary that almost all the people of Toulouse embraced it and renounced their false beliefs. In a very short time, a great improvement was seen in the town, People began leading Christian lives and gave up their former bad habits. So, awesome start. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, instructed by the Blessed Virgin, as well as by his own experience, St. Dominic preached the rosary for the rest of his life. He preached it by his example as well, um, by his sermons in cities and in rural places to people of high station and low before scholars and the uneducated to Catholics and to heretics. The rosary, which he said every day was his preparation for every sermon and his little tryst with our lady immediately after preaching. Kind of like that. One day he had to preach at Notre Dame in Paris on the feast of St. John the Evangelist. He was in a little chapel behind the high altar, prayerfully preparing his sermon by saying the rosary, as he always did, when Our Lady appeared to him. And she said, quote, I love this, Dominic, even though what you have planned to say may be very good, I am bringing you a much better sermon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh That's good. So Saint Dominic yeah, I know it's cute. So they so Saint Dominic took this in his hands, the book that she offered him, read the sermon carefully, and when he had understood it and meditated on it, he gave thanks to her. When the time came he went up into the pulpit and in spite of the feast day made no mention of Saint John other than to say that he had been found worthy to be the guardian of the Queen of Heaven. The congregation was made up of theologians and other eminent people who were used to hearing unusual and polished discourses. But St. Dominic told them that this was not his desire to give them a learned discourse today, wise in the eyes of the world, but he would speak instead in the simplicity of the Holy Spirit and with his forcefulness. So he began preaching the rosary and explained the Hail Mary word by word as he would to a group of children and used the very simple illustrations which were in the book, in the book given to him by Our Lady. Now, I wish they had that book somewhere. That would be an awesome artifact that he had this book that she gave him with these illustrations to preach the rosary. Well, Blessed Allen, who had written this account, according to Carthagena, mentioned several other occasions when our Lord and Our Lady appeared to St. Dominic to urge him and inspire him to preach the rosary more and more in order to wipe out sin and convert sinners and heretics. In another passage, Our Lady revealed that after she had appeared to St. Dominic, her blessed son appeared to him also and said, this is from Jesus, 
quote, Dominic, I rejoice to see that you are not relying on your own wisdom and that rather than seek the empty praise of men, you are working with great humility for the salvation of souls. But many priests want to preach thunderously against the worst kind of sin at the very outset, failing to realize that before a sick person is given bitter medicine, he needs to be prepared by being put into the right frame of mind to really benefit by it. That is why, before doing anything else, priests should try to kindle a love of prayer in people's hearts, and especially a love of my angelic psalter. If only they would all start saying it and would really persevere, God in his mercy could hardly refuse to give them his grace. So I want you to preach my rosary. That came from Jesus. All right, I'll stop right there for a second. Any thoughts on that? I'd well, like you know, to say something. That, again. Just, okay, just go ahead. Just something brief. Um, I went to um, Dominican high school and college, and uh, whenever we had religion class, we always started it with the rosary. Well, I think that's a good practice. In fact, I think that's a good thing to get people into that practice. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And I think that's what Our Lady's kind of following that, that foundation, that mold, because that's what the rosary does. That's exactly what it does. It gives us that power of love and self-discipline. And and when we're in the practice of it, it keeps us in our mind and heart and soul uh, on the right path. I think that's a very important aspect. That's what I was saying a while ago earlier when I referred to the rosary as kind of like that uh, scarlet uh, thread. Because in my life, that was hang- keeping me hanging on. And... Uh, uh, Jesus is who keeps us hanging on, but Our Lady and all these these elements to, of our faith that uh, helps. We all need these helps because the, through the power that God uh, grace that flows through these things, that's what's important about it. And I think that's why it's important. We're not timid about our faith, but that we do we we present our faith with power through that love and self-discipline that comes from our heart, that foundation that Christ works through us. I, th- I think that's important. The Spirit of God, it is through His Spirit uh, that all this works. Oh, and th- and that's why the rosary is important, because it is backed I, by the Holy Spirit. By the way, there was a time when the heretics tested St. Dominic, and they said, those words that you have on that paper, if they are truly holy words from God, then you can throw them into this fire and they will not burn. Well, St. Dominic threw the paper into the fire and it did not burn. Pulled it out, threw it in two more times, it never burned. And they immediately converted when they saw that. So uh, a little help from God here and there, you know, to have a little miracle oh. to convert uh, the sinners. <laughs> That's pretty powerful. What would you do, John, if you saw that? Oh, I'd be impressed. I would be very impressed. Of course, these days someone would that's, say, oh, that's specially treated paper that won't burn. I mean, that's what someone would say these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, parchment. All right. <clears throat> parchment that does but not... We, uh, yeah. You know, and there is paper that, you know, you can specially treat that won't burn, you know, but... Anyway, they didn't have it back then. Now, here's the sad part. All things, even the holiest, are subject to change, especially when they are dependent on man's free will. It's hardly to be wondered at, then, that the confraternity of the Holy Rosary only retained its first fervor for one century after it was instituted by St. Dominic. After this, it was like a thing buried and forgotten. 
doubtless, too, the wicked scheming and jealousy of the devil uh, were largely responsible for getting people to neglect the rosary and thus block the flow of God's grace, which it had drawn upon the world. But Mary is not going to stop, of course. So thus, in 1349... God punished the whole of Europe with the most terrible plague that had ever been known. Starting in the east, it spread throughout Italy, Germany, France, Poland, and Hungary, bringing desolation wherever it went. For out of a hundred men, hardly one lived to tell the tale. Big cities, towns, and villages, and monasteries were almost completely deserted during the three years that the epidemic lasted. This scourge of God, hold on a second, the scourge of God was quickly followed by two others, the heresy of the flagellants and a tragic schism in 1376. Well, later when these trials were over, thanks to the mercy of God, Our Lady told Blessed Alan de la Roche, to revive the former confraternity of the Holy Rosary. She appeared to him. Mary appeared to Blessed Alan, and he was one of the Dominican fathers at the monastery at Dinan in Brittany, or Dinan in Brittany. He was an eminent theologian and a famous preacher. Our Lady chose him because since the confraternity had originally been started in that province, It was fitting that a Dominican from the same province should have the honor of reestablishing it. So Blessed Allen began this great work in 1460 after a special warning from our Lord. This is how he received that urgent message as he himself tells it. One day when he was offering Mass, our Lord, who wished to spur him on to preach the Holy Rosary, spoke to him in the sacred host, quote, How can you crucify me again so soon? What did you say, Lord? Alan was horrified. You crucified me once before by your sins, and I would be willingly be crucified again rather than have my father offended by the sins you used to commit. You are crucifying me again now because you have all the learning and understanding that you need to preach my mother's rosary, and you are not doing it. If you only did that, you could teach many souls the right path and lead them away from sin. But you're not doing it, and so you yourself are guilty of the sins that they commit. Unquote. Wow. Well, this terrible reproach made Blessed Alan solemnly resolve to preach the rosary unceasingly to inspire him to preach the rosary more our lady added this on another day she said quote you were a great sinner in your youth but i obtained the grace of your conversion from my son had such a thing been possible i would have liked to have gone through all kinds of suffering to save you because converted sinners are a glory to me And I would have done that also to make you worthy of preaching my rosary far and wide. And so, blessed Alan de la Roche reestablished this devotion to the rosary in 1460. I'm going to pause right there so we can comment on all that I've just read. (coughs) Reaction? I consider that, you know... The importance of devotion. It says in First uh, Timothy chapter uh, four, beginning with verse seven, it talks about uh, you know uh, athletic training being valuable and important. And uh, you know I, again, uh, how we're going back to that you know athletic training in Saint Paul, and how you know that's a, a, a very important part of you know, our training and our devotion. He said athletic training is valuable to us because our body is valuable to us. But even so, infinitely more so is the importance of devotion. 
because that is for not just the now, here and now, but for eternity. That's what St. Paul is referring to about devotion. And as you said earlier tonight, uh, John, that the rosary is the queen of a prayer, actually. And right. how important that is to our Lord. It's pleasing to him. <clears throat> and so th- that's why I think it's important for us to hold on to it, to hang on to it. That's my And, you know, in, in one apparition, um, one of the visionaries, a young kid, asked Mary, why do we say so many repetition things in the rosary? And she says, you have to realize the devil can't stand hearing my name and my son's name. So with that many Mary and Jesus, you know, throughout the rosary, she says it's like a thump on his head every time he hears it. So as you might say, Donald, it's like a machine gun, just bang, 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 bang. (laughs) Jesus, Mary, Jesus, Mary, Jesus, Mary. Oh, my God, the (laughs) devil can't stand to hear it that much, so. Repetition is almost like a machine gun hitting the devil. So it's a nice way to think of it, really. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the more machine guns, the better. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, Donald, multiplies. Tell, about, tell about the rosaries in the tanks, Donald. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, there have been many times where – uh, soldiers would have the rosary in their cockpit, you know, in their vehicles when they were out on convoys, and uh, they'd get hit by IEDs, and it just totally destroys the vehicles. I mean, demolishes them. And uh, many of these times we've actually seen where soldiers in this situation that were hit were not hurt. And uh, it's just an amazing thing that you see it quite often. Uh, The first time I've actually seen that, though, John, was when my son and a couple of his uh, band members uh, from Final Hour, back in our Final Hour days, uh, when uh, he was was stopped at a, this was like 9 or 10 o'clock at night, he was stopped at a uh, stoplight uh, waiting for, uh, you know, the, the light to turn green. And as they were sitting there waiting, this car came from about 80 mile an hour from behind them and ran right into them and forced them 15, 20 feet out into the midsection. Thank God no, uh, nobody was coming from the other side. But when I was called, I responded uh, uh, from, this is when I was at uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I went out there to where this was on the way to Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And I went there to where the accident was, and uh, they were out, and they were talking. Uh, but I looked at the vehicle. The rosary that I had at the front of the vehicle, you know, the, where the rear view mirror was, it had totally been knocked off, and it landed in between the back two seats, the, 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 the third seat and the second seat, second seat and the third seat. And that's where the, the rosary uh, with the uh, rear view mirror landed. <laughs> But what I ah. noticed when I got to look, inspecting it, when I was inspecting this uh, accident, everything that was behind the rosary was totally demolished. Demolished, Everything in front of it, nothing happened to it, and everybody was okay. <laughs> it was just like, uh, that was the first time neat. I've ex- actually seen that. But then when I was in Iraq, we saw that a lot, uh, where yeah. uh, uh, vehicles were <laughs> totally decimated. But nobody was hurt. Yeah, you said you saw that like twenty-eight times or something like that. You know, a bunch oh, of times. At least, at least, yeah, at least, yeah. Over the course of John, why, twenty-seven why months. Aren't, why aren't the uh, news reports that we get from the front lines uh, ever mentioning anything like this? Oh, they would just say, "Oh, that's 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 getting off track. That's getting religion into it. They they probably wouldn't want to." do that you know they, they, they're very careful about such news and CNN yet, to us, it. no uh-uh. they downplay it they minimize it they don't want to get people all stirred up but the, the truth is people love to hear stories like that but but i don't know it's it's a secular world so anyway oh one other thing uh, the rosary actually means crown of roses. 
And uh, it said that uh, every time people say the rosary, they're placing on the heads of Jesus and Mary 153 white roses and 16 red roses. Being heavenly flowers, these roses will never fade or lose their beauty. And that was an interesting little comment. Uh, and I believe the hmm. You probably know, Donald, the 153 and the 16, what that would stand for in the rosary. Well, 153, I mean, right off the bat, I go to uh, uh, John chapter, the Gospel of John chapter 21, beginning with verse 15, when the apostles were out there and, and, and they were fishing. And they were coming in, they were fishing, and they hadn't caught a thing all night long, not even a tadpole, uh, Mike. They didn't catch anything. And as they're coming in, Jesus is on the shore, uh, and he yells at them if they caught anything, knowing that they didn't. But when he told them to t- take their uh, uh, their net and go over the other side of the bow there, they'd get their catch, which would be, one, a miracle because they're about 100 yards from shore, and they don't get a school of fish like that that close to shore. And two, uh, Jesus, this was not their first rodeo. Jesus said, you know, they, 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 that's when they realized that Jesus was on the shore. And Peter jumps out into the water and starts swimming over to him and everything. And Jesus instructs Peter to help his brothers bring on shore uh, that miraculous fish. Well, guess how many fish there were? 153. And these uh, <laughs> fish represented every nation, tribe, tongue, and all the people of the earth. And th- uh, that, to me, was one. And then the other is that the, the, it was all in one net. The Greek root word for net that they used for one uh, without a tear was schizo, without division is the meaning, without schism. Ah, and so you get a yeah. picture. You get a picture of the church here, 153 <laughs> nations at the time, and then also under one net. And then Peter is asked, you know, goes with Jesus, and Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Three times he'd asked him. Well, then what is the responsibility of the sheep? To listen to the voice of the shepherd. And today, uh, Pope Francis is the 266th successor of Peter. We meet and we need to listen to the voice of the shepherd, but we also need to pray for him too, to keep their arms up. We need to pray for them because they're under attack. Uh, the church is under yeah. attack, so we need to pray for them, <laughs> definitely. But that's very good. Cool, I thought 153. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had a feeling you would know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, and they said the complete rosary is a large crown of roses, and each chaplet of five decades is a little wreath of flowers, a little crown of heavenly roses, which we place on the heads of Jesus and Mary. Uh, and again, they say the rose is the queen of flowers, and the rosary is the queen of devotions, thus becoming the most important one. And we could do another hour or two on all the messages about how important the rosary is and all the examples of miracles coming from the rosary. That's a whole big talk easily. So, But we just touch on it here, in, in other words, because uh, this is the birth of it, and this is – when it began now i would add that you know this is a work in progress because who can tell me when the last change to the rosary occurred 1984 was it with pope uh john paul ii uh he came out with the second uh or the 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 five illuminous mysteries that was actually 2000 2002 oh 2002 well i knew 1984 was a big year for me with him too, but okay, gotcha. Yeah. So here we're going all the way back to about 1214 AD, and here in 2002, the Luminous Mysteries are added. Of course, at Fatima, 1917, was added the uh, um, Oh My Jesus, Forgive Us Our Sins, Save Us From the Fires of Hell, Lead All Souls to Heaven, Especially Those in Most Need of Thy Mercy. Mary told us to add that to the rosary in 1917. And many people say that without even realizing they're quoting Mary from Fatima in 1917. So see, this is a work in progress. 
that's been going on for a long time. And uh, so anyway, and of course, we were talking more recently about the prayer of St. Gertrude and how that saved yep. multitude of souls in purgatory. Um, she says a thousand, but the academic uh, theologian said a thousand is a relative term for just saying more than you can count. <laughs> so in other words, a great many, <laughs> at least a thousand. Um, are released from purgatory with the prayer of St. Gertrude, which goes how, Donald? You know that. Eternal Father, I offer you the actual body, blood, soul of it. No, wait a minute. Eternal Father, I offer you the precious blood of your divine Son, Jesus, in union with all the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls of purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home, and within my family. Amen. That's basically it right there. Well done. Boy, I love testing you, and you always come through. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, you know, the rosary is quite a story and quite a prayer and has miraculous results. And as Mary said, which I think is one of the most important quotes we've ever said from her, this is the weapon the Holy Trinity has picked to beat the devil. I mean, it's right there in 1214. She says that to St. Dominic. That's one of the biggest quotes I think we could hear from her. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Very much so. Because when the Trinity is involved, that also includes the Mass. When at the consecration of the Eucharist, I always honor our Lord's, the presence of the Trinity. The Father is the purpose, the Son is the passion, and the Holy Spirit is the uh, uh, power. So you have the purpose, passion, and power of God in one scene, just like when Jesus was baptized, when Jesus transfigured before Peter, James, and John. You have that scene of the, of the uh, Trinity. Well, we have that at every consecration as well. If we understand it and we see that, that's why they say Father. You know, the prayer is towards the Father, but the Son is there with us, you know, interceding for us there at the Mass. Oh, it's cool stuff, man. Very cool. Hey, I just thought of this. I thought I'd mention this while I'm thinking of it. You know Merjana, the Medjugorje visionary, who still gets uh, messages? Right, uh, from uh, Mary every month on the 2nd. And it's probably one of the most famous ones. You see her picture all the time, Merjana, or it, it would be pronounced more Marianne, but Merjana Soldo, I think is her name now. But uh, she will be coming to the United States, to Des Moines, Iowa, September 26th and 27th as part of a huge conference there. And that also includes Don Calloway as one of the speakers. So just thought oh, really? for, yes, and that's not far from you or me, Donald. So, and if Judy wants to get her car. I interview her. <laughs> I interviewed her oh, at Medjugorje back in 1986. Did you I, really? I remember. Uh, that was awesome. I sure did. Oh, and it would be God. great she to go a... up there and, uh, and uh, interview her again this coming uh, September. Yeah, well, it's a big conference. There's like, I think they said as many as 10,000 go to that conference, so it's a huge one. And like I said, Don Calloway will be there and some others that are fairly well known. Are you talking about Father Calloway? Father Calloway? Or his dad? No, the one that's with, uh, yeah, the one that just wrote the book on consecration of St. Joseph and has been with Stockbridge. Yeah. Don Father Calloway. Calloway's his conversion story is, I mean, just amazing. Anybody well, ever get a chance same to one. listen to? Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. Well, his father. Yeah, it's you the know, same his word. father. Okay, <laughs> then yeah, he, he's a Catholic priest, and uh, he's very involved. Uh, very. Oh, one that just, was, uh, but his conversion. Yeah. Yeah, it was from Japanese mafia. Yep. Yep. You, yep. Yeah, he's the same, same guy. Same guy. Same guy. 
All right. Well, anyway, that's a little plug. Now, next week, we will be going to Mount Carmel. We're going to hear the story oh. of our mother, our lady of Mount Carmel. So that will be next week. Got a lot we of stuff all on that. Oh. Yeah, we get all the great stuff, don't we? <laughs> oh, I tell you. Yeah. Well, before we do our final bit, any last comments from you, Judy, or Mike, or anyone else? Well, I can tell you this about uh, when I pray the rosary. <clears throat> Quite often when I'm done, I get a new poem. <laughs> yeah, you know. And, you know, Mary comes most often during the reciting of the rosary. I've noticed that in my research, that more <laughs> often than any other time, she mm-hmm. comes when people are reciting the rosary. So there you go. Mm-hmm. And every time she does so, she's speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. <laughs> well done. All right. Well, we want heaven to notice us, so we are going to say a road or a uh, Hail Mary worldwide. All of you in all the countries out there, we know you're listening. You always have, including Amy in Peru and many others that uh, have chimed in over the years. We appreciate you. We're so glad that you come and show up. And uh, so join with me now so that heaven can smile and hear all of our voices at once. Saying together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God bless every one of you out there who tuned in tonight. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was educational. I hope it was interesting. But more than anything, come back next week because we have always so much more to share with you. Going on six years now, Donald. Going on six years. So, uh, I'm excited Cheryl. about that. And I do yeah. got a request. I do got a request for anyone out there, especially my Deeper Truth family here. Uh, if you don't mind taking this show and sharing this link to others that you know, please do that because Facebook is uh, harassing me. Like I have, I mean, this is unbelievable. I can't even get on Facebook now. So what I sent out there already, uh, I can't. I can't see what anybody has responded to it or anything. But if people can do that. You know, Facebook can't stop us all. They can stop me because they they got me pegged. But other people out there, they can, you know, they they'll have a hard time uh, keeping this off if uh, I get help from others. I sure would appreciate it. But anyway, that's well, Donald, with, uh, people. I have a re- I have a request, a prayer request. Um, okay. <clears throat> last night when I uh, when I arrived at the at our church for choir practice before mass i found out that one of the ladies that sings with us has breast cancer her name is patty Hmm. and i'm asking um you guys and and our listeners to please offer a prayer for patty all right put that on the rosary patrol put that on put that on the rosary patrol i already did you got 12 outstanding outstanding and uh yeah that would be great because you got 1200 plus uh, rosary patrol uh, prayer warriors that that makes a that helps <laughs> it does so that right. yes patty patty we'll keep her in uh i'll be praying the rosary here in a few minutes on my way to work so uh i'll i'll remember patty Thank how you. about you mike well this is all very interesting uh, I'm i'm just thinking that uh someone who would doubt uh, all of what we're talking about might ask the question that uh, you know uh, God knows the end from the beginning, and if you know, b- given that the rosary is so powerful, why didn't He give it to Adam and Eve at the very beginning to uh, combat Satan directly? Well. I guess we were we weren't able to accept it yet. We didn't. We weren't 
in ourselves, we weren't ready. He, that, in that, fact, that, if you look at the Old well Testament, be. in the Old Testament, you go all the way from all the different covenants, from Adam and Eve being a covenant of marriage, uh, Noah mm-hmm. was a covenant of family, uh, Abraham was a tribal covenant, uh, you have kingdom covenant with uh, King David, Moses and King David, and then Jesus comes in and gives us a worldwide covenant, a Catholic covenant. You see as these covenants grow, as mankind grew, uh, you see it becoming larger and larger and larger. So it probably has something to do with that, our ability to receive it. And so right now we're at a point where... I was just going to say, I think, Mike, that uh, we usually come up with a solution after we have a problem, but with Adam and Eve, we didn't have a problem (laughs) yet. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) <laughs> kind of get it, kind of get it backwards. Yeah, <laughs> so that'd right. be my guess. And it's a guess. All right, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we'll Donna Lee, see you next week. Yeah. Good night, everybody. And I'm going to do Donna Lee, the Rosary song. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Everyone. Oh, great. God bless you.